My name is Mia Cash. I'm Overpass's Talent Advocate Manager. And today we have the very special privilege of speaking to two of our very successful, wonderful um, Overpass contractors, Andrea and Ever. And we are so excited to have them on to discuss not only their experience on Overpass, but how they were able to find success, find different clients, and you know, really just build a working life on Overpass. So I will let them introduce themselves from here. Um, Andrea and Ever, do you guys wanna say a few things to our audience? Sure. First. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Andrea. I'm originally from the US, but I have lived in Central America for the last six years. And I've been on Overpass, I think since about 2019. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Ever Hernandez. I'm from El Salvador, and I'm currently living in uh, Newcastle, England. So I've been with Overpass for about, since 2017. Wow, amazing. Very yeah, cool. so as you can see, lots of years of success for both of these wonderful people. Um, amazing. So let's just jump right into it. Um, and also want to encourage everyone watching, please drop any and all questions in the chat. We're going to have um, a brief Q&A at the end. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that. So Ever and Andrea, it's funny because I haven't even been with Overpass as long as you have, but how did you initially hear about the company? Those were kind of in its earlier stages. And what really attracted you to the opportunity um, with, you know, the remote work opportunity? Well, I already worked as a freelancer remotely for a company here in El Salvador, uh, and it came up on a Facebook ad. And so I just thought it was really interesting, like uh, kind of cutting out the middleman. So I went on, clicked on it and uh, did my profile and I interviewed with Garrett right away. And I kind of was like, is this real? Like, is this really real? And he's like, it's real, Andrea. And the rest is history. So Facebook ads definitely work. And it was, it was a pleasant surprise because I really had been struggling to find something here. Um, and the wages for working directly for a company here are so low. So that was yeah. really, really cool for me. Awesome. Well. I'm glad you mentioned that because I actually saw an ad on Facebook myself and I was, I started reading it and it said to pretty much record um, your voice and go through a little script, which I did. And then I started investigating a little bit more and then it asked me to create a profile. And then from there, I went into an interview, which was kind of unique because I was currently working for um, Upwork and things weren't uh, as that's what I wanted. And once I joined um, Overpass, things were just a little different. Uh, one of the things that really intrigued me into going through the whole steps and everything was the simple fact that it's all about sales and the majority of it now. Um, and then, you know, I landed a couple of jobs here and there. And now I've been with this client for roughly close to a year now. So I'm loving it. And I don't see myself going anywhere else. Amazing. And ever you kind of segue perfectly into the next question I wanted to ask. So I guess the first part is how did you all go about finding clients, you know, initially on Overpass? I know we get a ton of contractors like, how do I find a client? How do I get a job? All that stuff. So first, what was that process like for you of, of finding a role on the platform and the process of interviewing and, and starting with, with your client? just click on the jobs and start going through them and yeah. use any and all um, experience that you have. You know, if you worked in a restaurant when you were a teenager, then you can do a uh, restaurant equipment sales, use that. Um, and then when you, when you start getting really good, I think you'll start getting calls as well. When you, mm -hmm. when you become successful, then the eight, the, uh, the guys will call you and say, Hey, are you interested in this position? So really, I think staying open and just applying. And then I tell everyone who comes on here, every interview, even if you don't get that job is great experience for the next interview and you will build that confidence. You'll build up. So even if you don't get the job on that first interview or the second, use it for the next one. What can I do better? And that's really what I did, you know, just 
get as many interviews as you can and pra and practice and and get great until you really nail those interviews with with your skills and confidence i think is the best advice and I agree with you, Andrew. Uh, one of the things back in 2007, thing, I think things were starting off with the word pass where that, you know, not too long. So it was a little bit easier, you know, to get clients. Yeah. I would look at the profiles. Mm -hmm. I would look at, you know, the actual company itself. I hit it off really well. Garrett is an amazing person, a great human being. Um, so we clicked right away. And, you know, he was very supportive and just everybody in Overpass is very supportive. So that actually just made me feel much comfortable, you know, and being with Overpass and continuing with Overpass and seeing how they grew and how they help others grow as well. So basically, you know, make sure you look at, you know, what you want. You know, you, you got to, you're in sales. Sales is very unique. You have to love it. Your experiences are very important. Whatever type of experiences you have, it could be insurances, could be anything, use it to your advantage. Personally, myself, I was in the hospitality because I used to work for big corporations, but um, I didn't find anything that like that. So one of the guys in the sales team, he actually wrote to me, sent me an email, said, are you interested in applying for this? And I said, yeah, let's give it a shot. I took the interview. Um, and one of the things that I've learned throughout the process as, as, as being a contractor is I tend to ask questions to the employer myself. I don't, I mean, they ask me questions, but I want to know a lot more about their company as well, how stable they are, you know, what their projections are in here in a year, in five years, how do they see themselves as well? Because Personally, I don't like moving around from one place to another. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you also make sure exactly where the company stands. And obviously, Overpass does that as the beginning stage. But, you know, I'm very curious myself. So I tend to ask those type of questions myself. That's a great point, Ever. And we just had like an interviewing workshop for contractors because you know, a lot of them are like, oh, I'm nervous. Like, how do I go about the interview? And that's such a crucial part of this whole process. So um, I guess, Ever, you gave us your, your best advice, which is come prepared with questions, be interested in the company. Um, Andrea, did you find that that also helped you um, while you were interviewing any special tips or tricks during that process? Definitely, I agree with Ever. Ask a lot of questions. Um, and that confidence of mm. like, like he's showing, like ask questions. How long do you see this going for? You know what I mean? Is this a yeah. one week campaign or a three week or, you know what I mean? And they'll usually, you'll, they'll usually give you their projections. We want a hundred more agents or, you know, um, they're all different. So you definitely have to, to learn the ropes and, and figure out each company. It could be a one man show or a corporation. And sometimes mm -hmm. going into it, you don't know who you're interviewing with. So definitely I agree. Um, ask questions and, and um, figure out what you want. You know what I mean? How many hours do you want? How many mm -hmm. days a week do you want to work on weekends or absolutely not? You know, so <clears throat> you can be a little choosy. You can, you can um, definitely figure out what, what serves you because that's what really this is all about. And Showing that confidence, I think, of asking questions really helps in the interview, like ever said. Absolutely. And I just, to everyone watching, you're hearing from Ever and Andrea that be an advocate for yourself during this whole process, because what we don't want to happen is you're just like, I will take anything. And then at the end of the day, you're unhappy with the, the pay or the hours or anything like that. Um, so as they're both saying, it's really important that during the interview, you get all the information you need to make an informed decision about whether or not to take the contract. And you're demonstrating to the client like, hey, I have something to bring to the table um, to help you. And I am here, you know, for the long term and, and for your long term success. So I think that overarching theme of, of confidence is really, really important, um, especially during the interview process. So thank you both. Um, kind of moving so you had a really great interview you got the offer yay what have you found to be best practices for success at the beginning of a contract because sometimes we see like 
within the first couple of days, some problems arise, what would you suggest to contractors to make sure that the start of a contract goes well and, and they can really hit the ground running with the client? I say show up, first of all. Yes, and be please. patient. <laughs> be patient. But be like, if they schedule a Zoom meeting, don't be trying to get on Zoom the one one minute before the meet. Get on, make sure your audio works, make sure your camera works. Be just like any regular job, be 15 minutes early, be waiting, be ready, and then be patient because a lot of these um, clients, this is all new. This is their first time on overpass and they're trying to figure things out. So if you are there with them at figuring it out with them, helping them figure it out, you know, there's there, I, I found very few that are like, this is how we do it. This is our script and this is gonna get you appointments or this is gonna get you sales and do this and it'll work. Usually you're working right along with them, figuring it out, building scripts and, and then be honest with them. Say like, I, when I get to this part, you know, I, I lose them or this doesn't seem to work or this is too long. Really be a part of it. And I think you will um, make yourself, like you said, really valuable to that client, but definitely show up, be on time and be patient. Be patient. This is uh, just as new for them as it is for you most of the time. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah. I actually agree. I mean, it's it's really nice. You know, once you start everything, you really don't know much about it. Yeah. You know, you have an idea. Uh, you always have to be open minded that there's going to be changes or there's going to be some things that you just don't know. You yeah. want to make sure you ask questions. You want to make sure you're a very good listener um, and always, you know, set your ideas. Let them know what your ideas are as well. Um, this current client that I'm working with, they are awesome and they've never actually worked with contractors and it was the first time and it was different because everyone was pretty much hired around the area and everything and now they currently have a lot of contractors from overpass working from both sides services and sales so you know it shows that overpass and it shows that us as contractors we're doing something beneficial to them so you always want to make sure that you're you're on top of everything. You want to make sure that you know exactly what they want and they know exactly what they expect from you. I mean, it's relatively very important that you understand, you know, their culture as well as they understand your culture. So always keep your head up, always, you know, stay alert and make sure that you're striving for the stars. That's it. Yeah, love it. Um so all advice that I hardly agree with, please show up. That is honestly something that we deal with more than you would think. Like, please do show up. Um, and again, you know, be patient. Um, they're figuring out the technology and, and everything as much as you. So that is some really great advice. So one thing that I do want to talk about as well is sort of this balance. We are in freelance work. We are working remotely. Um, so both clients and contractors have the option to leave contracts, go to something better. So how do you kind of strike a balance between, of course, being dedicated to your client um, that you're working with, but then also being aware and open to, you know, new opportunities and, and finding that balance between like, I'm dedicated to my current client, but I also, for me as a freelancer, want to make sure that I'm having the best life that I choose, if that makes sense. So I think some contractors are like wanting to deal with that. You want to go first, Ever? I have an experience <laughs> that happened. Mm. Um, I started in July with um, this current um, um, company I'm working with. And then that Another company came along and said, you know what? We like your skill set. We like what you're all about. We'll match what they're giving you and we'll still give you more. And then we're going to give you, instead of the four hours that you're currently working, we're going to give you eight hours. So here it goes ever. You know what? Let's give it a shot. It's a huge, I Googled the company. I researched everything and they're huge. I mean, they're a multi-million dollar company. So I went along with them. Once I started working with them, it was like, this is a trial. So we want to make sure this works. And if it works, we're going to continue. Well, it didn't work. 
we lasted with the other guy for about a month. So I went back and I spoke to my previous employer. You know what? Um, I left in good terms. So um, he says, you know what? We would love to bring you back. Come on back. Um, I went back with them. And since then, I think I am, I feel like the loyalty. They pay me well. I, I'm not going to complain. Commissions are great. Everything's fine. The culture and everything. So you're always going to have those type of, you know, people reaching out. I get people on, on LinkedIn reaching out and offering me the world. But quite frankly, it really depends on, on what you want. Personally, myself, I want to be stable somewhere. I don't want to be there for a month. I don't want to be there for six months. And I want to also grow. So it's really important for me to know exactly where my feet stand. And with this current client, it's amazing because they're so open to a person, you know, and not just see it as a business, but overall, it, it, it's a very nice culture. So they know if you need some time off, they know if you want to do some sports or anything like that, they're open to it, especially since I live in England, I work late hours and they work early hours. So let's say, for example, I want to go ahead and have a game. It's obviously in the afternoon when I should be working. They say, you know what? Go ahead, go to your game, and then make up the hours. So it's, to me, it's very important where you stand. And there's going to be a lot of other companies out there that are going to reach out. But at the end, it's really how you feel that will make you stay where you want to stay. I agree. So number one, I agree. Do not burn your bridges. Don't burn any bridges. I have ended very few contracts myself. I have spoken with them and say, you know, this isn't working with my schedule or it's not working out or I, I, I got another offer and let them end the contract is what I generally do. And also, as we mentioned earlier, when we're interviewing flexibility, the same as ever is so important to me. I'm a mom. I have my kids here. I live in a foreign country. And some, you know, sometimes things just happen. So I really talk in the interview about flexibility and how, how, how are you guys? And a lot of times, if you'll discuss that in the beginning, there are a lot of campaigns that'll say, as long as you get your work done in, in the work day or in business hours, you know, it doesn't matter which hours or however it works for your schedule. So that's always important for me to find out right from the beginning, because it's, it's something that's really important to me. Like ever said, find out what you need and, and convey that to them. So I totally agree. Yeah, I think the broader things we're seeing are communication is just so, so important. So again, nothing wrong if things don't work out with the client, but it's the way in which you go about the situation that's so important. Um, and that really kind of determines how well your relationship with clients are and, and how your contracts go. Um, Ever, you mentioned, you know, growing with a client. And I'm curious what that looks like for you, given you've been with your current client for a while. And Andrea, you've been with, you know, multi, you know different clients. What does it mean to you both to grow with a client? Um, and I guess how has that impacted your contract with them and your relationship with them in, in the long term? Well, this company has multiple stages mm -hmm. to grow in. Um, like I said, there's the service side and there's the sales side and there's account managers and then there's the closer. Um, it does take some time to get to a closer because it's a very unique um, business and it involves hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars to close. Like a deal is $100,000 to close, wow. um, but they do it. You know, they have very specialized people who have the actual skill set to close. So I'm actually, it's been a close to a year, but next month will be a year and I'm still there. But ever since I started, there hasn't been a month that I have not reached my goal. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why that happens is because I've been, I understand them and they understand me. And you have to come in with the great motivation and you have, you're not, you're not always, obviously, we're not always going to have that motivation. There's going to be ups and downs, but you want to make sure you come with the right attitude as well. And it's very important. They get to see that. I've been offered, you know, to apply for an account manager position. Personally, I'm happy where I am so far, but 
as soon as I feel a little bit more capable and have a better understanding of the business, then I can. But for now, I mean, there's always there's always a, something to look up to, you know, anywhere you land. So to me, it's very important to learn and to grow as a person and as a you know as a contractor. But I want to make sure I take my time on doing so, and I don't blow it if I get into a position where I don't think I'm suited just yet. Yeah, I I agree. I've been on some campaigns where it's just a one man show, and I'm the only one. And then others that I'm part of a team and, and uh, totally agree, like uh, work your hardest, do your best. And, and of course, that's what we all want is that stability. We want that five-year contract, right? We don't want to just do three weeks and be done. So bring your A game and do the best you can. And going back to what I said before, just showing up and being with them and being responsive and, and um, just being part of a team. Or if it's a one-man show, just, you know, meeting expectations trying to hit your goals and if you're not be open and honest and and give your opinions and and try to figure it out together if you just you know are a yes man just do it you're reading the script and you're not getting sales um they might go looking for someone else so you really have to you know use your skills and and your head and and try to be a partner with them i think is is the best the best route right yeah yeah um so you've mentioned experiences that haven't been so great and haven't worked out. Is there something contractors can look out for, for like the ideal client? Um, a lot of times on the show, it's like, what's the ideal contractor? But for you all, what's the ideal client? What are you looking for? And what can our contractors be on the lookout for when pursuing a contract? That's a tough question, but I think Ever said he researches the company. So the okay. bigger, the better for him. Um, I kind of like those one man shows. I kind of like okay. being the, the, the person, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, looking up the company, seeing if they have a legit website, uh, cause I did get, I, I got fooled into one quite a while back and, and, uh, it was like real estate, but I didn't really do my homework. So that's my bad. Right. And then, uh, it kind of evolved into something that didn't make me feel good. And I was like, mm -mm, I don't want to do this. I want to do things that, that uh are honorable and good i don't want to be mm -hmm. trying to you know so i totally agree with what he said research the company see how long they've been around see you know if they're legit and and if they're growing and you can i mean google you can google anything so and then ask questions so everyone has a different idea of what ideal is you know if you mm -hmm. want to be in this big giant billion dollar company awesome i really like the i like the small ones myself mm -hmm. i like that uh, personal relationship of how you do it, Andrea, they can call me at any time. I can call them at any time. And mm -hmm. I, I really like that. So just finding your own security and what works for you, I think is best. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, working for startup companies and work for companies that are actually fully developed and totally different. Yes. Um, I've had to share both and um, I feel really comfortable with companies that are fully developed and know what they're doing, but at the same time, allow you to bring up your ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very neat. Um, startups tend to scare me sometimes mm -hmm. because you never know what's going to happen. And due to my personal situation, sometimes, you know, not being stable, it could be challenging. So I prefer something that I can say, you know what, this is, I can see myself here. I can see myself um, long term, and not just you know three weeks, three months, or just a year. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing also is that my current employer he told me, "Okay, ever since you're coming back, I expect you to be with us at least a year. So if you commit yourself that you're not leaving in a year, you can come back." So that was one of the things I mentioned, and I said, "Yeah, I have no problem with it. I knew exactly what I got myself into." because I had already been with them. So I went along with it. And so far, it's been great. And the mm -hmm. great thing about it is that, you know, we have very good communication. And yeah. the communication with your employer and yourself, it's just in the respect, we have the mutual respect. It's very unique. And I personally just love the fact that I have both. 
So it's great. And, you know, um, we all, like you said, it, we see things a little bit different. We like things different. So whatever pleases you, make sure you do it. You know, just make sure you research the company before anything. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, switching gears just a little bit, I think we've really talked about those intangibles that are so necessary for success, for success, the showing up, being willing to do the, the hard work, researching the company, coming prepared, all of that great, great stuff. Um, but again, this is a sales platform. So you will need to do sales in some capacity. You both obviously have a lot of previous experience in this work before coming onto the platform. So I guess what advice or what tools would you recommend to contractors who maybe are just beginning sort of their, their sales journey, maybe starting off as appointment setters with the goal of you know getting to an account executive or something like that? How how, what ways have you found best to build up your sales skills specifically um, when working with clients or when not? And I guess, how is that translated uh, to overpass? Good, very good question. And I, I want to go first on this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the things I can definitely tell people is if you're a newbie, don't ask for too much. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure it, it, you have to be valuable to the company. So if you want to grow, make sure you let them know that you're a beginner, you're learning, and you want to learn. Um, I tend to watch videos. I tend to read. I tend to do whatever it takes to learn a little bit more. Um, different platforms or different people show you different skills. You just want to take everything and make sure you use what you can actually use. Um, because not everything works for a campaign. So... Make sure you, you keep yourself updated with anything new. Um, also, I follow pages um, in the current industry I work for. So just keep yourself informed of everything and you'll know what, you know, what everything brings, you know, what that industry is currently facing, you know, the new things that are coming along, what they're not using and things like that. So make sure you, it's not just about sales to me because when you, really work with somebody it's just building some type of communication or a bond with them and then the sales just comes along naturally because you just have something to talk about and then everything just evolves and then at the end you end up getting appointments or you end up getting sales agree and my biggest thing is confidence and we don't always have that confidence but you have to kind of be like an actor or an actress honestly and and portray that. And so, I, I mean, I've had meetings with, with uh, a boss, three hour meetings where they're playing my calls and I have to listen. And they're saying, here, you said this word, but you didn't say this word. And I'd like you to say, it's painful. It's painful. That's the hardest part, I think, of this job. But I had to take that in, be open. And guess what? It worked. So I love what Ever said, watch videos, read, research, but also try to be kind of an actor and portray confidence until you really get it, until you become confident um, and take advice, ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask um, and, and be open when they give you feedback. And it's really hard as a human being when someone says, I didn't like how you said this word and you're like, but that's how I say that word, <laughs> right? But if you want to be long-term and, and, and I'm not saying take abuse, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying try to be open. And, and take advice and coaching um, with an open mind and uh, a smile on your face. And it usually will help you get good results. Love that, thank you. Um, kind of the last couple of questions before we move to Q&A. So again, if you have questions, please remember to put them in the chat. We'll be answering them very soon. Um, this is I maybe more for the overpass team than for our contractors, but given you've been with us for a while, you've seen our transition and our growth as a company, what areas of improvement or things you would like to see that would help you become more successful um, on the platform? Just curious. Mm. That's a great question. I mean, I think all the issues that we had in the beginning um, really have worked themselves out. It, the oh, platform good. is very... 
as a CRM, it's very basic, but it's so easy to learn to use. And then a mm -hmm. lot of us, sometimes we don't use, we just use overpass to sign in and we right. use really complicated CRMs that are always breaking and always having problems. So mm -hmm. I sometimes I miss overpass because it's just so basic and easy to use. And I can, I can text uh, Naomi or Garrett and they'll answer me and, and help me with my problem. And these other giant CRMs, like you take, it takes seven days to get an answer, you know, or whatever. So that, and now that you guys are doing direct deposit, I don't, I don't have any complaints. I, I love it. So, I mean, those are my big <laughs> issues back in the beginning, you know, uh, but honestly, I can't think of anything that I would say, you guys really need to work on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right now I can't. It's great. You know what? I, I, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, it's just the evolution of everything with the word pass yeah. has been great. Um, from start to where we're at right now. And I include myself because I just simply enjoy working in Overpass. I've used your CRM. I've used other CRMs. I've used a million different tools. Yeah. Um, and currently, once again, going back to the client I have, it's just maybe because I, I, I love them. I personally love them. Um, I love a lot of the things that they do and how they do things and what they've structured. So... Overpass has met pretty much every expectation that I've always wanted. Um, I did try other platforms where I felt like, you know, I couldn't even go to the restroom because you, you, you can't, you know. I felt like they were taking pictures of me. I, 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 it was like, you know, I can't turn side. It was, it was just awful. Um, at the end of the day, Overpass has been everything I've hoped for and um, you know anything new that you guys come up with would be welcome um, the email campaigns you know your just everything you guys have been implementing Text. has been great Maybe. Text. you know what yeah. you don't know how many times clients and contractors have asked us about text so it is on the docket but yes texting sms and one thing to know you remind me one of the things that we use here is that we record our voicemails, mm. right? So we just click and the voicemail drops and it just saves us time. It saves the client time because we can move easier, easily to another call. That would really help yeah, just okay. being able to record your, your message and then just click in a button. Have it done. That's a great one. Thank you. Um, last question before our Q and A, because I see we have a couple of people who wrote in. Any just last words of wisdom for those contractors who may be feeling discouraged, um, haven't found a role, or are just wanting to to find success and are feeling a bit a bit down? What are your your best words of advice for them? I'm going to go back to what I've been saying the whole time: is that confidence. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter if you have an accent. It doesn't matter if your English is not perfect. If you have that confidence that I'm a good worker, I'm going to show up, I'm going to be there for you, I'm going to do my best, none of that matters. So uh, going into it thinking, oh, English isn't my first language, or I don't have a lot of experience. No, I, I've said this to clients. Well, I've never done that before, but I'm really smart. So I could, I can learn, you know what I mean? Like, just be open, be honest, and have that confidence. Don't be timid. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. You can do it. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. So, and I put up, bring up an example of someone I currently work with. This guy has an amazing confidence. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Um, he's from India, so he does have an accent, but his accent's not that out of this world. And he looked at my stats and he goes, look, you look, you're one of the top performers. Tell me what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I briefly explained to him, this is what I'm doing. And this has worked for me for closely to a year. He's doing it now and he surpassed me in one month and a half Wow! because you have to have that confidence. You have to have that personal motivation. You know, even though you apply for our 20 different positions or different clients and nobody calls you, there will be that client. Yes. Once you get that client, make sure you actually take or you give your 110%. Mm -hmm. Be good listener. Be motivated. We don't like everything, you know, but we have to do certain things, but we have to do it to the best of our abilities. 
Um, so always keep yourself cheerful, you know, you know, make your life as peaceful as you can. Don't make it, don't complicate yourself. You know, things will evolve. And um, I encourage everybody just to continue striving to push yourself and work hard and, you know, just apply it because sooner or later you will get that, that contract that you're looking for. Love that. Thank you so much. We're going to move briefly to our Q&A. We have a couple of questions. Um, so the first question is from Josh, um, and he asks, what are your tips um, to give contractors who want to write a good proposal when applying for a job? I don't know what yours is ever, but mine's really basic. Hi, my name's Andrea. I've been doing this for a few years now. And then I maybe highlight um, some of the things I do. I, I, I've been an employment setter. If I see that it's a specific industry that I've experienced in, say for instance, human resources, I'll add that little blur, but it's really just a little high and about me paragraph, short and sweet. And at the end I say, I'm I'm ready to start immediately or I'm I'm open to learning new things something like that just a little blurb you don't have to write 10 paragraphs and kind of try to cater it to what they're doing if, if you have that experience but just uh, short and sweet grammar check it you know don't Please. and and use proper uh, punctuation and and capitals and and just make it look nice because that really is your first impression then they go to your profile they listen to you they look at your picture and all that stuff but i think that really is their, your first impression keep it short and sweet but very concise i agree um one of the things that i do obviously it's your cover letter um i tend to say you know what um this is me um this is the experience i have this is what i like to do i've been in the industry for this long these are the different type of um, you know, experiences I have. You'll be able to see them also in my profile. Mm -hmm. um, just eager to, you know, to continue learning, achieving more and growing more as a person and as a uh, employee. And you know, I'll give it my I'll give it my all with you guys and just keep it really simple. I I really don't go to that big extent because at the end of the day once you have your interview that's when you really want to nail things down and that's where it's game time so at the end of the day i think your cover letter or your low proposal is just it has to be a little bit basic but at the same time very specific and tailored to who you're speaking to and they're in their, their industry yeah awesome so the next question is from Dennis, um, and you both touched on this a bit earlier, but what are concrete steps you take to make sure that your initial communication with the client on a contract is effective and positive? I think we've kind of gone over it. Um, yeah. First, your little blurb. And I know Garrett's so great about helping you with your profile, like he literally tells you he he told me describe each job as a day and what you what you do in that job so yeah. put that as a blur every day I would and that really helps the client understand what you do what you can do and kind of how you think right mm -hmm. and then on that interview like I said be early have your camera on be dressed nicely uh show some teeth smile look into the camera you know what i mean and just exude that confidence and be open because if they're going to say have you um ever sold you know flights to outer space well no i haven't but related to something you know what i mean or i really think i can do that i really think i i love outer space and uh you know <laughs> right okay, yeah so. pretty much everything you just mentioned yeah. you just keep yourself grounded on your feet you know it just Mm -hmm. which do you that's yeah. it don't don't overdo things don't exaggerate just make sure anything that you know just deliver it there and then it, your past experiences don't say things that they're going to get you in trouble later on because mm -hmm. you don't know so yeah. just be very yeah just say the truth and that's it yeah honesty and integrity guys they go a long long yeah. way so keep those in mind um, this question is actually forever um, from J. Michael Martinez. He asks, what was the biggest difference between Upwork and Overpass for you? 
Um, one of the biggest differences is obviously Upwork is a huge corporation. You don't have that much interaction with people. Overpass was just like, you know, I just found my best friend, Garrett. You know, this guy is just the person I, I, I needed to grow as a person and to grow, uh, grow my business. So I felt very identified with Overpass. Like, you know, these, this platform is actually helping people get to where they want to and beyond. Over, uh, Upwork was, here's a job. We're going to take screenshots of what you're doing, how many times you touch the keyboard. And I, I don't want to be micromanaged. At the end of the day, it was like, if you have worth worth ethics, then you'll be fine. But I mean, it it just felt awkward being controlled so much when at the end of the day, you know, I've had very great success with Overpass and I wouldn't, you know, change it for anything else. And I still get a whole bunch of emails, people asking me to apply in Upwork, I just delete them. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, it's just a really good point is that we are focused on our contractors and they're not just these, you know, disposable people who is like, oh, we need someone to fill the job. We'll find whoever. I think we really focus on building a community and helping people grow um, and find success for themselves. So that, that's a really great point, Evan. Really glad that you're able to find that. Also, we all love Garrett. So <laughs> plug to Garrett there. Um, Dennis asks, what more could we do as Overpass to help the initial onboarding process be smoother between new clients and their new contractors? That's the question. That's a good question. Yeah. Well, I know you guys are doing like a, a training now, which mm-hmm. I think back in the day, it was kind of like, here's the platform. Do you have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe we've got a little training, but now you guys are actually doing a training for new contractors, which I think is really awesome. Um, but I don't know. I think that's really the responsibility of myself and the client. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Is communication, exchanging numbers or emails. And, and like I said, just showing up and being present and being available. And so this is how you can reach me. And this is, you know, the hours that, that I'll be available, but I can't honestly really think of, uh, you know, a time where I felt like I couldn't um, get a hold of, of my client. And again, mm-hmm. you can just go on that chat box and Garrett or Naomi will be like, let me, let me find them for you, or let me try to get a hold of them for you. So you always have someone there to help you that is what I feel like as a, as a contractor. Andrea, quick yeah. before we go to ever, sorry, ever just wanted to follow up quickly. Did you ever feel that a client would need more training on overpass when you were working with them? Um, I think it's offered to them and they don't always, you know what I mean? Okay. They're like, oh, okay. I, oh, I'm missing an hour. And they're like, I don't know how to do that. Do you know how to do that? Uh, like, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I think maybe they have it available, but they, maybe they're busy and they're president of yeah. a company and they don't have time, but I, gotcha. I don't think it's not available to them. And I think the okay. same, I'm like, just message overpass. They'll tell you, they'll, they'll walk you through it. Like it's usually my right. best advice to them. They're like, oh, okay, I can do that. So they don't know as well as ever. And I do that. We could just reach out at any time. Because you guys are not this big, huge corporation. We can't speak to humans. There's always somebody there. Right. Um, so I think I think it, that it's not not available to them. I think they're just a lot of times really busy. Yeah, and I agree because um, I was admin for one of the campaigns. So I was able to see pretty much everything. And you can add bonuses. You can do everything. I guess they just simply don't explore as much yeah. as what we do um obviously they don't have the time they're not in that actual platform the whole time so but anything i just simply tell them look if you go if you log in into overpass you'll be able to see this on this page and you could do this and this or if you or if you're still stuck on something just you know send an email either to garrett or know me and they'll be more than happy to assist you with anything Mm -hmm. but it's a very simple Mm self-explanatory it's just obviously these people really don't have that much time. They should expect you to do the work and do what you got to do. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I know we're testing some new things out. So your feedback is very helpful. Awesome. I will give everyone a couple more minutes to write down any last questions. That was the last one we had in our uh, chat. Um, but 
otherwise, I just want to thank you both so, so much for taking the time. It's been such a pleasure, um, Ever and Andrea. You all, you all are kind of like the paragon and example of, of what we want our overpass contractors to be and, and how we want them to find success. So i um, so glad you could join us. I know our contractors are really happy to hear from you. Um, and to all in the audience, if you really liked this content, I know we've been trying out different formats with, you know, speakers and all of that. If you really like this content, please, please let us know. We may do something similar in the future where we bring on, you know, um, longer term overpass contractors to discuss their experiences. So if you really resonated with this and you found this helpful, please, please let us know. We want to cater to you um, and what would be most helpful to you. All right, I'm gonna give one last check. All right, no more questions. Um, so we'll end a little bit early today, but of course you can reach us as you know at any time. And thank you so, so much again. Have a wonderful rest of your day and evening and we will talk soon. Thank you, thank Mia. You. Thanks bye. so much. Bye, Mia. Bye both.